Hi, my name is Dave Staffan. I live in Barrie, Ontario, which is about 45 miles north of Toronto. And I'm sitting here with my friend Alexandria, who has asked about me to talk a little bit about my, my history. Uh, I'm 63 years old, and I was born to parents who both adhered to the methods, practices, and traditions of Satanism. I have memories at two, three, four, five years old, uh, often in the basement of the Anglican Church in Paris, Ontario, where I was subjected to a satanic cult. Sometime in my second year, I was taken to events that were designed to uh, measure my attributes and character traits because those in the dark world want to know the, uh, the attributes of their offspring, spiritual gifts, spiritual gifts, sorry, uh, courage, compassion, loyalty, uh, determination and will. All these things are important for the, for the cult to know of their children. So beginning sometime in my second year, I was taken to events of that nature, which often involved fighting with other children, uh, animals, and devised scenarios in which they measured these uh, character traits. These, these occasions were uh, a time of uh, fun and gaiety for, for the adults. Women were present, and I, my remembrances are of a being in a smoke-filled room, because uh, everyone smoked in those days, uh, and much laughter going on amongst the adults. The events changed dramatically sometime in my third year, and women were no longer present. Uh, men, the men sometimes wore robes and chanting was often heard. And these events were designed to initiate me into the cult of my dad and other members of my family of origin now deceased. The events were designed to manipulate me into killing a human being of my own free will by stabbing him in the, part, in the heart with a knife. This went on and on uh, because I, I, I adamantly and consistently refused to do what they wanted me to do. Uh, Satanism is a spiritual attack against one's body, soul, and spirit. And they try to put the negative dark energies into your energy field that would control you. And so, with God's help, I believe strongly, I was able to resist and, and resist consistently and would not become part of their cult and would not do what they wanted me to do. I did not wish to hurt others. I did not want to hurt others. I had compassion for others. And I was very determined to not do what they want. Now, it's important for anyone listening to this to understand that the people involved in cults and secret societies have a long practiced facade of loving kindness, benevolence, and a wish, and a wish to others, because they are wolves in sheep's clothing. Because in, in the world today, they have to hide, they have to disguise themselves. In the time of Jesus and before, Satanists walked right out in the open and were very clear in their intentions. The Old Testament refers to the drinking of blood, bestiality, sex with children, sodomy. 
the invoking of evil spirits and demons, the casting of spells, curses, and oaths, human and animal sacrifice, the eating of human flesh, and the worshiping of false gods. Those are all tenets of Satanism. And I was subjected to most, if not all, of the things, the things I mentioned. But as I said, today, cults, secret societies, and other groups that use children and others vulnerable for satanic rituals and perverted sex, and much, much more, have to go underground. At five years old, the cult leader declared regarding me and my resistance to joining the cult, we must destroy him. If we don't, someday surely he will destroy us. Because they could tell that my compassion for my others, my wish to do the right thing and not hurt and torment others, would make it so that as I grew up, I would want to do something uh, to shine the light of truth on Satanism, which turned out to be true, because that is what I uh, hope to be able to help uh, accomplish with uh, people like you, Alexandra, and uh, my many other friends involved in this, in a, in this similar fight. But for me, that my destruction was thorough and complete through the use of satanic rituals and beating upon beating upon beating to hide my attributes of courage, determination, will, or if, if you will, and, and, and compassion for others beneath layer upon layer upon layer of fear, anger, sadness, anxiety, and, and lacks in the areas of self-love, self-esteem, uh, self-worth, and, self, and uh, self-confidence. My whole adult life, I thought I was a coward. I, I believed I was a coward. Uh, because of what the cult did to me. And the cult leader, I have memories of conversations I overheard as a little boy saying, we haven't, we haven't uh, removed his courage or his, or his will. We have just hidden it deep inside of him. And if he ever finds out what we have done to him, he will want revenge. Because, of course, people like that can only think in terms of revenge. I don't want revenge against those who did those things to me for my whole lifetime until the age of 53. I just want to shine the light of truth on it so that the multitudes of other children and others vulnerable who are right now being subjected to those very same things I was subjected to for over 50 years uh, it is made known and so they can be protected. I mentioned the Anglican Church of Canada. I asked those listening to consider for one moment the Holocaust that was perpetrated upon First Nations children here in Canada that occurred for over 100 years. Residential schools were set up across the country that were for all the First Nations children. And these children had to go to them, to these schools. It wasn't an option. These schools were run by our mainstream religions, the Roman Catholic Church, the Anglican Church of Canada, the United Church of Canada, the Baptist Church, and other church organizations throughout the country. 
these houses of Satanism were disguised as houses of God because they were maintained, supervised, controlled, and managed by our mainstream religions who in concert with the Satanists and control of our federal and provincial governments perpetrated this attempted genocide of First Nations people, culture, and their immense spiritual power for over 100 years. In not just one or two of these residential schools, but in fact, each and every residential school of each religious domination. The power structure, that, that same power structure still exists today. The last residential school in Canada was only closed in the mid 1990s. That power structure exists throughout society on all levels, from the very top of the social, economic, and class structure, if you will, to the very bottom. I don't know or I don't know if there is a higher percentage at the upper levels of the socioeconomic uh, chart or, or not. But the people who have perpetrated against me are from all socioeconomic classes. Some are, are very educated, and many consider themselves the elite of our societies. In his book, The Biology of Belief, Dr. Bruce Lipton states that each cell in our body is an entity unto itself, and as such has its own brain. Each of these cells is connected energetically, energetically with each other and collectively forms our subconscious. Our subconscious is a tape recorder which records all, re, all events in our life, regardless whether we are conscious or unconscious, in a drugged state, through, through alcohol, uh, other drugs, and so those, those memories, body memories, are there if you know how to access them. When I was 53 years old, I finally realized that the problems uh, in my marriage were caused by the immense anger that lurked just below the surface in me. And uh, it's hard to... It's, it's even looking back now, it's hard to believe that I, it wouldn't have been very clear to me. I had a good heart. I meant well. I had compassion for others. And though I believed I was a coward, I also believed I was at, at heart a good person. And yet, I, I verbally abused my wife with anger and uh, my children and was dysfunctional uh, as a husband and father. So because of me, our family wasn't able to resolve differences uh, through conversation, through reason, and through logic. So upon this discovery at 53 years old, I was determined to find the cause of my anger and remove it. And uh, I had come upon a book called The Verbally Abusive Relationship by Patricia Evans, which my wife brought to my attention. I bought the book and read it the, within a day and realized that what she said was true. That was my first realization that the problems in our marriage were all mine and that my anger was the problem. So God, God intervened in my life at that time by, number one, making me aware that the problems in my marriage were, my, were caused by me. And also, upon 
introducing me to Sandra Fecht, uh, who you know, Alexandra, and who is at the forefront of uh, healing victims from post-traumatic stress, whether it be sexual abuse, satanic abuse, or other traumatic effects. The post-traumatic stress incidents of Satanism are inside the energy field of its victims, which is by design. Satanists have existed since the beginning of time, and this information has been handed down from generation to generation of those who adhere to the methods, practices, and traditions of Satanism, black magic, witchcraft, voodoo, and the like. If Satanism is a spiritual attack against us, then it makes sense that God or source or creator is the one that can assist us on our healing and does so through the efforts of people aligned with creator, God, such as Sandra and others. Satanic rituals that utilize these dark energies, and it's all about energy. We are a ball of energy. And my ball of energy was filled with the darkness from my 50, over 50 years of uh, being subjected to the vicissitudes of Satanism. And they have to be removed one at a time, the effects which I believe started when I declared my intention to God to be all that I could be in love and light and asked for his divine assistance in doing so. I believe that since that prayer, God has brought the healings to me one step at a time in a methodical process through Sandra, my friend, Fran Toes, who has spiritual gifts that allow her to see satanic mechanisms and, and uh, other people's energy fields. And through own spiritual gifts that seemed to come to me as I went along the uh, spiritual pathway uh, to, remove the, to remove these energies. Just trying to figure out where I go from here. So as, as I removed these dark energies from my energy field, my own natural attributes began to reassert themselves. And I believe that's the case for every human being walking on the planet Earth. If they didn't need to remove negative energies from their energy field, they wouldn't be on planet Earth. They would be in a higher realm. So as God has facilitated the removal of these dark energies, my own attributes began to reassert themselves. And my thoughts that I was a coward were no longer present. And I realized I had an abundance of courage, faith in God, determination, and compassion for each of my brothers and sisters who walks this journey on earth with me. So I forgave each and every person who had ever done me a kindness, which were in the hundreds over my 53 years old. The teachings of Dr. David Hawkins, who was the spiritual avatar who only recently passed, allowed me to elevate myself such that I could understand that those in darkness are doing the best they possibly can. That is what they are at this moment in time. Just as we couldn't, we wouldn't expect a, 
a dog to be able to go to Harvard because that isn't what a dog is. We can't expect those people who live in the energies of hatred to make the choices that those of us who are aligned in love would make. They are mired in the energies of hatred and possibly have been for lifetimes. So for them, it seems only right to hurt and torment others because that is what they are. When we're in the jungle, we take care to not get eaten by a lion. We don't necessarily hold it against the lion that he wishes to eat us. We just take care to protect ourselves. And that is the way I view these people who, who hate and who wish to hurt others, who wish to use children for perverted sexual gratification. I do hate their actions and will do everything and anything in my power that is a legal means to make known these things or to stop them. But I'm not going to invest my energies into hatred, into hating them. And so by forgiving them, forgiving them, not their actions, but forgiving them, I was able to transcend my feelings of hatred and thoughts of revenge so that I could be, uh, so that I could better lead my family uh, in love and light and happiness and joy, which is what we should be all aspired, aspire to. It's important to understand that while we love and cherish and wish to protect children, Satanists use them for their own perverted sexual gratification. While I would forgive and, and uh, those in darkness wish to wish for revenge. And to, I don't know, to uh, accept our brothers and sisters and to assist them if we can is not the way of those in darkness. They wish to torment them and if they can control them, which I was for 50 years. Upon knowing what had happened to me through hundreds upon hundreds of uh, body memories that are very uh, easy to retrieve, it's kind of a bit of a spiritual process where you just go within yourself. I, uh, I was determined and still am determined to have the light of truth shine on Satanism through me, if possible. So, beginning in 2011, I began sending letters to the Premier of Ontario, uh, law enforcement agencies, other governmental jurisdictions, the Anglican Church of Canada, and over 160 perpetrators, people who I allege perpetrated the most heinous atrocities against me, including, and maybe uh, climaxing in a, in a satanic ritual that was perpetrated upon me in the summer of uh, 2004, in which there may have been there was well over a hundred people present in which I was sodomized in front of this group. If you Google the purpose of sodomy and Satanism, uh, you will read many of the reasons for perpetrating this act upon me, who represents to them everything they're opposed to and hate. The, the letters I sent to these many 
people, the perpetrators and the premier and law enforcement agencies were, they all came to me in a spiritual way, in, in a way, in a manner I call divine communications, that they just came through me and were written in a very thoughtful, respectful, intelligent manner. These letters were forgiving letters. The letters I wrote to the perpetrators told them of my forgiveness for them, and though I didn't forgive their actions against me, but that it was important that the truth be made known so others could be protected, and that was eventually going to happen. It's interesting that, that I sent hundreds upon hundreds of letters to perpetrators, and some of these were copied to the premier and, and the Ontario Provincial Police. The vast majority of these letters elicited silence. You would think that the well-heeled members of society who received these letters from me would be aghast at the ac accusatory tone of these letters and the finger that I was pointing at them. But of the hundreds of letters I sent, only a very small handful of people, including some members of my family of origin, complained to the police about these letters. It is my belief that the vast majority of people who received these letters did not want their names known to police. Because I gave, I gave my statement to a detective of the Ontario Provincial Police in 2010, which was an interesting process. When I completed my testimony, it took, well, I, I was, it was well over an hour, he stated, I do not believe in Satanism, and I don't believe in cults. This detective was probably in his upper 30s at the time of me giving him the statement. What's interesting to me is, is that it is well documented in Ontario that in the mid-1990s, there were two instances of Satanism. In the first instance, in Thunder Bay, Ontario, over 30 people of that community alleged they were subjected to satanic rituals at the behest of others in that community. So as a result, a series of conferences on ritual abuse were held. Ritual, ritual abuse is an acronym for Satanism. In the United States, Satanism, Satanists complain of the term satanic ritual abuse. And they have enough power to stop uh, most groups who, survivor groups, from using the term satanic ritual abuse. But I prefer to call a spade a spade. So I will refer to it as satanic ritual abuse. These conferences that were held in Thunder Bay were well attended by the government of the day other governmental jurisdictions, law enforcement agencies, including the Ontario Provincial Police, and the media. Also in the, in the 1990s, a case of staggering proportions occurred in eastern Ontario in which over 200 children were subjected to satanic rituals uh, pedophilia, pedophilia is the cornerstone of Satanism, and much, much more. This story was investigated for the Toronto Star by Judy Steed, who is an award-winning winning journalist. Judy Steed was the first speaker at the ritual abuse conferences in Thunder Bay, and she also investigated the story in eastern Ontario. 
she has lamented on the fact that she wished she would have uh, fought harder to have the Toronto Star include in their published reports of these many atrocities in Eastern Ontario of the satanic aspects of the story, which they chose to not publish. They reported on the pedophilia, but not the satanic aspects of the story, thus robbing a generation of people information that could have protected children and others vulnerable. That they chose to, that the Toronto Star chose to aid and abet Satanists, cults and, and groups that use children for satanic rituals and perverted sexual gratification is indicative of the conspiracy of silence perpetrated upon an unsuspecting public by the government of Ontario, law enforcement agencies in Ontario, and the media. I have written a multitude of well-written, thoughtful, respectful letters to the media and have not elicited even one response to my letters. And I, I uh, illustrate the link between the uh, Holocaust perpetrated upon First Nation children and what happened to me at the Anglican Church of Canada, because of course the Anglican Church of Canada was well involved in the Holocaust perpetrated upon First Nations children. Not even one reporter of integrity and courage contacted me with even one question on the multitudinous allegations I made that happened to my family and me, and me for over 50 years. The Premier of Ontario did not respond to even one of my many in the area of 25 letters since 2011. That is why the detective of the OPP had no knowledge of cults or secret societies that practice Satanism because he hadn't been taught that. One would think that the two instances of Satanism that occurred and are documented in Ontario in the 1990s would have changed the way law enforcement agencies train, educate their... Uh, their future officers, as well as their procedures. One would also hope that the government would enact laws that would make possible uh, charging and convicting people involved in these crimes and to, and to uh, at the very least, make the public uh, know, know of the dangers. But none of the above, none of the preceding occurred as a result of those two instances of Satanism uh, in Ontario. So media, media agencies do not connect the dots between all the stories, the isolated news items in the paper of sorority hazings resulting in death, confinement of one for some evil purpose. There's a story in Western Canada of a man who tried to eat the face of another while on a bus. Child pornography is a multi-million dollar business. So then if that's the case, where are all the pedophiles? Some of them have to be our neighbors and people we deal with on a weekly basis who are in disguise who are wolves in sheep's clothing. In Canada, we've had serial murders, Paul Bernardo, Russell Williams. In the United States, you've had Charles Manson, son of Sam, and others. We also had the Polytechnic Massacre, all of which are most likely people acting out their satanic experience as children. 
but the media does not attempt to connect any of the dots with any of these things because if they did, they and the public would understand the breadth, depth, scope, and pervasiveness of Satanism. It's, it's like beating your head against the wall, trying to get a response from the people who get elected and take sworn oaths to protect the good citizens of their constituency. I can't believe that they are all aligned with and associated with the dark societies that control our political parties and all governmental jurisdictions. So they either lack the courage or faith in God to do what Gandhi did. Gandhi faced the powers of darkness within the British Empire with, uh, with only moral integrity, and I don't mean only, because it was ample. It was abundance, uh, courage, uh, the wish to do the right, just, and proper thing, and faith in God. And that, the power of those combined toppled the British Empire in India. And I'm asking the Premier of Ontario to do the same here by implementing the ritual, uh, the ritual Abuse Task Force, which is a document I sent to her in 2011. The Ritual Abuse Task Force document came to me in a manner exactly the same as the many letters that I sent to alleged perpetrators and, and to her. The key clause in the Ritual Abuse ta uh, Task Force document states that each guilty party who freely gives all of the evidence at their disposal pertaining to the crimes committed against me will receive no time of incarceration but will be charged and convicted of each crime to which they are guilty. The power of this clause lies in the fact that if even one person decides to give their testimony, if one person decides it's in their best interest to give their testimony, others will be forced to do the same or risk going to jail. It is not unlike what occurred in the United States in the 1960s when the Justice Department realized that crime members were more fearful of crime leaders than they were of the law. So they instituted or enacted new laws to encourage crime members to give their testimony. I'm asking for at least one politician or one investigative journalist with the moral courage and integrity to do what is right, just, and proper on behalf of the many, many children right now being subjected to satanic rituals and pedophilia at the behest of these people in these dark groups who are mired in the energies of hatred. to do what Gandhi did, to take the road less traveled as Jesus would do if he were in their shoes. I have not yet given up hope that at some point in time, I will meet that one person that has that moral integrity and courage and faith in God to do what is right. But as of yet, I uh, have not met that person. But I pray I soon will. Well, at least one talks about the problem more in the alternative media community these days. And more and more people come out as, as you do. So um, maybe it's changing, hopefully, that it will change. Well, thank God for the alternative media 
and uh, I applaud each one, each survivor, and other person like yourself who is fighting on behalf of light and love and goodness, uh, because it is often a lonely bat battle, and you ostracize yourself sometimes in the communities you live uh, because people don't want to hear the truth. The world puts forth distractions to take us from our true purpose of finding our way back to God in the form of sports, movies, materialism, all these distractions that take us from looking within ourselves to see where we fit in the scheme of things, to see what we are becoming and what we have become. And so it is good to, it is good to be, to meet people like you, Alexandra, who uh, has devoted, you've devoted your life to try and uh, shine the light of truth on these many groups and, and governments that perpetuate this darkness. Yeah, and all of you, uh, you three, Sandra Peck, Francis, Toes, and you, you are also uh, traveling to Europe and speak about the problem. And I know that uh, Sandra and Francis are coming to Prague now, 21st and 22nd of July. But all of you, all three of you, are going to Dublin, isn't it so? Basis, pro, uh, basis uh, conference in September. And then you are going to be in Britain also, I know. So it's important to spread the information about what you have, uh, yeah, as a victim, what you have uh, lived through, but also um, your research and also that you are not full of hatred or revenge, but that you give also advice to others. It, it would like uh, destroy you if you would be full of hatred. So, uh, well, if you're full of, if you, if, if I allowed my, if I allowed myself to be full of hatred with thoughts of revenge circling in my mind, I would be mired in the same energies of those who perpetrated the crimes. So I had to transcend that. And I was so fortunate to become affiliated with uh, people I'm very close to and consider my good friends like Sandra Fecht and Fran Toes, who are very courageous, intelligent uh, ladies who are doing all they can to uh, help make known the truth. Uh, yeah, so I'm very fortunate. We will be in Ireland on September 17th, I believe, and in London right after that. Uh, so yeah, if anyone shows, if anyone uh, comes, I'd be more than happy to meet them. Yeah, and maybe we will speak once more before that, uh, you and me, or maybe when we are at the conference in Prague. So maybe we will have a Skype meeting so that you could attend also and we will film it. So. We can talk about it later, but we keep contact and uh, uh, maybe we could talk more also about um, how usual it is in Canada. If you can say something today or if you want to talk about it another time, how usual do you believe it is? Well, I think it's, it's prevalent in every... Uh town, village, and city in Canada, and probably the world. It, it, it's, it's beginning, it, its beginnings are rooted at the beginning of time, as illustrated in the Old Testament. The mainstream religions in Canada that perpetrated the Holocaust upon First Nations children are the purveyors of this in the beginning. Uh, so its roots are are vast and well entrenched in our society 
Now, I'm not, that's not to say that there aren't many uh, good people involved in the mainstream religions in Canada, but the core, but at its core, these religions were dark at the beginning, and I haven't seen that they've, they've changed because if they did, they would admit their total culpability in the Holocaust that was the First Nations people, the residential schools. And they just admit what they cannot deny. They don't admit the conspiracy that was perpetrated about, uh, uh, against all indigenous peoples in Canada by the government of Canada and the mainstream religions. And so until that happens, you have to ask forgiveness before you can be forgiven. Your, your crimes have to be known before you can be forgiven. So that, that we're not near at that state. And so the prevalence is it's widespread. Although I will say this, I believe most definitely the number of good hearted people in Ontario and Canada outnumber those with dark hearts. The problem is the dark hearted people control our political parties, and our governmental jurisdictions. Yeah. So the others there are either unknowing or too afraid to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So we need to stand together. Good people need to stand together to take back our society in Canada, and I'm sure that's true in other countries as well. Absolutely, absolutely. It's so true. Thank you so very much, Dave. And uh, we see each other soon also. So um, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for what you have done for others also, for the children who are abused now every day. Thank you, Alexandra. I appreciate your efforts on behalf of those same children and all good people. It doesn't have to be just children. I was subjected to, I was clandestinely drugged hundreds of times in my life uh, by my mom, dad, and some they associated with, and others who were only too eager to join in the torment of one who wouldn't be made to hate or hurt others. So. We are a family, those of us who wish to shine the light of truth on Satanism. And I thank uh, you from the bottom of my heart on your efforts to spread your love to the world. Thank you, Dave. And bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye.